It's been almost 30 years since an entirely new class of antibiotics was discovered, which is why our bodies are becoming immune to them. A new report warns pharmaceutical companies could end up shouldering the blame for a massive increase in deaths from drug-resistant superbugs. Former chief economist Jim O'Neill is the report's author and says companies need to invest more in antibiotics. We're estimating that the cost of that could be as low as $16 billion over 10 years or as high as $37 billion. Uh, seen in, in a global context and compared to the cost of inaction, it's, it's, it's actually peanuts. The review, backed by the British government, found drug resistance could see 10 million deaths by 2050 and cost the global economy $100 trillion. But antibiotics aren't profitable. Pharmaceutical companies still have to answer to shareholders and at the moment they make more money developing cancer drugs and other so-called exotic medicines. Jane Foley is from Rabobank. It's inevitable that they do have to try and uh, boost their profitability. That is the, the framework. Uh, we could change this framework by making them potentially privatised companies. But then, of course, we enter into a, 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 a very political uh, domain. So maybe a compromise would be uh, for some degree of, of government incentive. Jim O'Neill is suggesting governments reward any company who creates a successful new antibiotic. But that means they still have to foot the bill for initial development. He's also calling on the industry to establish a $2 billion innovation fund. You would imagine global financial institutions or let's say the G20 nations would share that cost on some kind of GDP uh, adjusted basis between them. GlaxoSmithKline and Swiss company Roche say they'll look at the recommendations without committing to any specific funding. Bart O'Neill has likened the crisis to the lead up to the financial crash in 2008 when banks ignored their social responsibilities.